Hello students, welcome back for another coding lesson. And today we're going to talk about the while loops, the while conditions. So by learning to learn the while conditions, we are going to write a set of code together. So let's look at the prompt. So we want to write a program that calculates the change the user will receive. So let's say that we are buying something um, and we use dollars, dollars is the currency that we use. It's how we measure the money in dollars. So let's say that we have an item of $40 and the user brings and the user has $70. So when he gives his $70 to the store attendant, to buy an item that is $40, he will receive a change, which is the money that he got back. Change will be $30. And let's say that we have an item of $40. However, user only has 30 dollars then what happens the user cannot purchase the item because he does not have enough money so the store intent will tell the user that he will tell the user that item cannot be purchased so Basically, if we only have $30, we can only buy something that is under $30. So the user needs to find a cheaper item. So basically, the user has to find something that is under $30 because he cannot afford something that is $40. Okay, so now that we have the functions of our code set up, let's see what we can do to write a code that best performed, performs the program. So when coding, we should start off by thinking what different variables should we have? Variables, remember, is well, something that we set of assign a value to. We can say x equals three, so that x will equal three. So in this case, what different variables do we need? So think about it. We need the price of the item. And we also need the amount of the amount of money that the user owns. So let's see. So item price equals and how are we going to know the price? So the code tells us that the user inputs the price. So since the number that the user input is a number, it's not a string. Remember, a string is a set of words that we use. So we are going to use the eval method to convert strings 
two numbers. So we talked about this in our previous lesson. So eval, and then we tell the user to input what is the price of the item. Don't forget to put quotation marks. So here, after seeing this, the user will input the price of the item. OK. And we need another line of code, which is um, money. Um, so this is saying, how much money does the user have? And we can use this to figure out if he can afford the item or not. So eval input, how much money did you bring? So after seeing this, the user will input the amount of money that he brings. And think about this. So let's say that we have the user, the item is $40 and the user has 70. <coughs> After saying to the user that he can afford the item, we also need to tell him how much change he receives, which is how much money he gets back. So we can say that change equals money owned minus item price. Why? Because if I have $70 and I remove $40 from my money because I brought I bought an item of $40, I will have $30 remaining. So let's see. Okay. So what are the different pop probabilities? Either the user brings enough money to buy something, or the user doesn't bring enough money to buy something, right? So here's what we are going to do. So if the money is enough, right? What happens? What will show that the money is enough? So if, if the value of the change is positive, then we will know that the money owned is more than the item price, which means that the user brings enough money. So if the user brings some, so if change is greater than or equal to zero, because if it's if change is zero, it means that money owned equals an item price, and the user can still buy the item. We can say, so we can tell the user, print, you purchase the item. You have a change of change, comma. So this is basically saying that you tell the user that you purchase the item and that they have a change of. So we use the comma to separate different to to separate different um information that we are trying to input. So this is we're printing out a string of words. 
and we take a break and then we put in the variable change and then it's basically like filling in whatever the change is because the change is not going to be the same for every single purchase and what happens if the user does not have enough money so if if change is less than zero which means that the user does not have enough money <coughs> we want to tell the user that he doesn't and also we want to tell him to try something else right but what if the user keeps on picking something that is above the price. We don't know how many times he's going to pick the wrong item before he gets to the right correct item that is something that he can afford. So in a for loop, we know the number of tries that the user has. If we say the user has five tries, he will only have five tries. But in this situation, the user might need 20 tries to figure it out. So we want to do something called a we want to do something called a while loop. So while change is less than zero. Okay, so yeah, so so while change is less than zero, we can say we can print and tell the rule tell the user you do not have enough money. Please select an a cheaper item. And then we can ask the user to input. So, and then, so we can ch actually change the price of the item because the user will input a new price. So item price equals eval input. So we tell the user to input. What is the price? of the new item. So over here, we're telling the user to, to do something. We're telling him that he needs to pick a new item that is a different price. And he's going to, when he inputs the new price, the item price will be updated to his most current price. And since we're running out of time, I want you guys to look at this program and make sense of what I've talked about up to here. Know how we assign the different values to the different variables. Know how the conditions for the change works, the two if statements. And we will continue talking about the while loop and complete the program in our next lesson. See you guys later.